What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. If you're new to the channel, then welcome and glad to have you. Today, we're going to look at how we can dynamically set our game camera limits to the size of our stage's tile map. If you're constantly making updates and changes to the size of your tile map or stage, this one just might help you save a lot of time. So let's jump right into it. We're starting off today with a stage that's based on a tile map. If we just click our tile map right here, you can see we have our tile map. We also have our game camera already set up and it's our it's uh, attached to our hero over here. We can see the hero, this character here, and the camera 2D is attached to him. If we go over to the right side and go down here and we look at the uh, camera 2D settings under limit, we can see that we have already set up our limits manually. So uh, if you don't remember, these are pixel coordinates. So basically these are the coordinates where the camera is not allowed to look or scroll beyond. If you're not familiar with the setting up of the camera 2D, you may want to go ahead and watch the Godot 3 platformer tutorial series that I also have on this channel, specifically the game camera episode. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the video in the description in case any of you want to check that out. So setting the camera limits here manually is great and all. But it can get pretty old if you're constantly having to do this manually every time you add or remove tiles that end up making your stage larger or smaller. Take this situation for example. Let's say that I had originally built out my stage to the, uh, to the ends of this yellow line here. This yellow line indicates the current camera limits. So let's just imagine that you didn't see any of this on the side over here and I had built this stage out perfectly to match up with this yellow line. Since then though, I have decided to make my stage bigger and now I need to change my camera limits again. Now doing this once or twice is really not much of a big deal, but I would guess that many of us will probably end up doing this dozens of times before we actually settle down and decide on a design and size for our stage. If that's the case, then it would be nice if we could have a little bit more of an automated solution to setting our camera limits. And of course, that's what today's episode is all about, so let's get into it now. To do this, we're going to have to add some code into our hero script. So jump into our hero, jump into our script here. Now we're going to put this code under the ready function that we've got here as a placeholder. We're going to create a new variable. We're going to just call this variable tile map rect, and this is going to be Actually, I'll just go ahead and type it out and then explain about it after I'm done typing. If you just stand by here with me. Get parent dot get node tile map dot get used rect. Okay, now, so what does this mean? So here we create a variable that is going to hold the rect that surrounds all the tiles that have something in them. So if we go back and we go ahead and look at our tile map here, we'll zoom out so that we can see our whole whole stage. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, hide the parallax background so we don't think it's part of our tile map. So you see any square or cell that's got a tile in it. Imagine that what our code does is it creates a rectangle that goes around every painted tile in here. And, and that rectangle is what is being set to that variable that we created right here, this tile map rect. So our, for our code here, because our hero, if we get into stage one, because our hero is a child of stage one, we have to tell the hero or well, because the script is part of the hero we have to say in the script get parent which is going to get the stage one node then once we're in the stage one node we're going to say get node tile map so from the stage one node it finds the tile map and a function that we can call on the tile map nodes is get use rect which is going to give us that rectangle that I just explained about on just a quick note if the hierarchy of your objects differ from mine, that being 
where your tile map or your hero is in relation to your stage. Maybe your tile map is a child of Parallax Layer all the way down here and it's not a direct child of the uh, stage one node up here. If that's the case, then you're just going to have to adjust your code a little bit to match your hierarchy. Now that we have our rect, we're going to go ahead and create another variable in here. Um, same thing, I'm going to go ahead and just type it out and then do a little bit of the explaining afterward. So we're going to do var tile map cell size equals get whoops get parent dot get node again we're we're working on the tile map node so this line of code is similar to one above it the way we access the tile map and instead of the uh, dot get use rect we're gonna do just dot cell underscore size and now to explain what this means what this does is it retrieves a vector 2 for the cell size of the tile map. If we get into our tile map here and we look into the inspector, let's see, it's probably under cell here. There we go. So cell and size. We see this X and Y. Put these together, they're a vector 2. But So you have the X and Y, 32 by 32. Typically, that's what you're going to have. Your X and Y sizes are going to be the same unless for some reason you're using a tile map that's got non-square tiles which I doubt anybody has seen much but in any case this cell size that we're referring to here with the tile map dot cell size is this so with this x and y coordinate this is going to be a vector 2 so this variable here tile map cell size is going to be a set to a vector 2 of 32 comma 32 all right, and one more time, I'm going to quickly bang out a few more lines of code here, and then I'll go ahead and explain afterwards. So if you just, you can follow along as I type if you want. So we're going to say camera 2 d dot limit left equals tile map dot rect or time app underscore rect, our variable up there, dot position dot x times tile map cell size dot x. All right, and I think I need to start copying and pasting. My typing skills aren't on point today. So we'll change left to right instead of position or tile map rect position x this is going to be tile map rect end x and we're still multiplying by the x value of the cell size again you probably have square um, cells there so whether you use x or y it's actually the, the same value but uh, just in case you have irregular tiles you should probably use x where you're supposed to and y where you're supposed to so We'll put that in there. Let's paste again. Instead of limit left, we're going to do a limit top. And for the top, we're going to need position.y. And we're going to use cell size.y. Then finally, for the bottom, we're going to use tile map dot end dot y and tile map cell size dot y now these four lines of code will set the limits for the left right top and bottom of the camera 2d now to explain a little bit more let's start here so with this limit left we set it to tile map dot rec dot position dot x now this is going to refer to the cell or the tile in the upper leftmost tile of the tile map. So if we jump back into our tile map, the upper leftmost tile. So when we say position.x or when we say uh, tile map rec.position, it's this tile we're looking at. And when you do a dot x, then it's just the x coordinate of this tile. 
jump back into our script so that we can see. So what we do is, because it's counting by tiles, sorry, it's counting by tiles and not by pixels. But for our camera limits, camera 2D, our camera limits are not set in tiles, they're set in pixels. So we have to do a little bit of math to get us there. So we're going to take the upper leftmost tile on the map, right? your tile map rect position, and we're going to multiply that by the cell size, which is 32. And then that's going to give us our X position, or the, uh, yeah, that's going to give us the further or the furthest left that we can possibly go for our camera limits. And then if we move on to this camera 2D limit right, we're going to have tile map rec.n.x. So if we jump back into our tile map again, tile map dot end or uh, rect the uh, your rect variable a dot n right. So we just said that dot position was the upper leftmost. Your dot n is the bottom rightmost. So you just apply that same sort of logic. We're counting by tiles, but we need pixel coordinates, so we're going to multiply it by the cell size. And then that's going to go ahead and give us the coordinates that we need for whatever's all the way on the right side. Then we go to the limit on the top and bottom. It's the same sort of thing. So for the top, we're using the uh, rectop position, right? Because the position is up here, the upper leftmost. So with that, we'll be able to multiply by the cell size on the y axis and we'll get our top pixel coordinate. And then jumping back in here, camera limit bottom is tile map rec.end. Once again, the end tile is the bottom rightmost tile. So then we just use that tile and we multiply it by the uh, cell size again. And then that'll give us this bottom pixel coordinate here. Now this gives us our new camera limits, which will be effective once our game is run. Or more specifically, once the hero, because the hero is the one holding this script, once the hero is instanced in the scene and runs its ready function. If we go ahead and we take a, another look at our camera limits, you'll actually notice here, let's just save everything up to make sure. If we zoom out here, here's the hero, the stage is here. So this yellow line indicates our camera limits. So if you see here, the camera limits haven't adjusted, or this yellow line hasn't adjusted to meet the outside border of this tile map. The reason that is, is because this yellow line only indicates what has been set currently. And currently, what has been set is only, sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. What has been set is only these manual limits, right? Once again, our new camera limits can only take effect once the hero gets to run his script. And right now he's not running his script. Once we run our game, the hero will jump in, he'll run its script, run all the code that we just put in here inside of this ready function, and then we'll have our new camera limits. Now that we have all this in here, we should be able to run our game and see what happens. Actually, you know what? Let's just, uh, for a test, I'm gonna go ahead and comment all this out. Okay, because we never did see what it looked like with the current camera limits, the uh, manual cam camera limits. So let's go ahead and run our game. Well, that's boring. Let's let's go ahead and put the uh, parallax background back in there. <laughs> so we'll run our game. Okay, so we're running, we're jumping along, we're doing all right, and then we bump up against the end of our camera limits, right? We're still able, able to run and play on the other side. We just can't see ourselves. Okay. So that's that. Now we uncomment our code so that it's enabled. Go ahead and save and then run again and let's see what happens. Okay, we can run. Usually our camera would have stopped, but we're good. We can keep running all the way to the last tile on our stage. Great, right? Every, everything works. Perfect.
But now that everything works, uh, why not just for fun, we go ahead and add in a couple, a couple of extra tiles just to see if our camera is going to adjust itself properly. So let's go ahead, jump back into our stage one tile map here. Get our tile map. Let's get over to the side. So if we add some new tiles out here, which one should I put? Let's just put this one. So if I add something out here, then our camera should adjust. Our game camera should adjust to, to, to the outside over here and we should be able to see and jump this gap. So let's see what happens with that. We're going to run through here again. Keep running. And there we go. We see that our camera adjusted to the new tiles that we put all the way and it snaps perfectly to the end of the last tile that we place on the map, right? The one furthest to the right side. Now you can spend less time adjusting the camera limits and more time designing your stage. And that's going to do it for today, ladies and gentlemen. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video, then please give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. The uh, sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available for download on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link will be in the description. And with that, we'll call it a day. So thanks again to everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.